today you look at Islam and see there would be no Islam, there would be no creation, there would be no Prophet had it not been for his daughter because she took the burdens of the Arsh and there is no perfection without understanding her reality. So this is where the tradition then starts off from. We find it in all of our books, Sunnis and Shias have narrated both of this. Tradition goes like this. The Prophet of God is instructed, says go, where? 40 days retreat. Arba'in, go for it. Go meditate for 40 days. In the same way as Musa meditated. In the tradition it says Moses went for 30 days. 10 days were increased to make it 40 days, from 30 to 40. The last 10 days were testing and a tradition was said that in those 10 days he was taught the ma'rif of Sayyid al-Shuhada. So he cried for 10 days connecting with Sayyid al-Shuhada. Then when he came back, he came back more perfect than he left. In this way the Prophet of God is instructed. Musa was instructed. Every Prophet has done Arba'in. Every Prophet has gone through 40 days. Ibrahim went for 40 days. Adam went for 40 days. Yusuf went for 40 days. Every Prophet goes for spiritual development. They were sent to a mountain. They were sent far away from their nation. When the Prophet of God was told, go for 40 days, where was the Prophet instructed to go? Look at the tradition. The Prophet of God was said, go to the house of Fatima bint Asad, go inside of the house for 40 days and don't leave it within those 40 days. Question is asked, why the house of Fatima? Because there was one existence there, existent there, who was 30 years younger than him, and that was Amir al-Mu'mineen who was within this house. Go to that house. Wasn't told to go to the mountains. Says go into the house. He goes into the house. Says separate from your wife for 40 days. Separated. He goes there. Now the tradition says, the tradition says he's sitting in his room. 40 days have gone. On the 40th day, he sees Jibreel descending. As Jibreel descends, he has a plate in his hand. The plate is covered. He brings it and he says, Rasulullah, Allah gives his salam and he presents you with a present. Both salam and present. Salam is no present. In the tradition it says, Jibreel says that Allah sent you a present. Mikhail comes down and he brings the plate. Why did Mikhail come down? There are four angels that uphold Allah and Wujud. All of existence is held by four angels. Jibreel, Mikhail, Israel, Israfil. And these four angels are represented as follows. One is the manifestation of Ar-Rahman, one Ar-Rahim, one Alhamdulillah, and one Maliki or Middin. Four angels manifest these four qualities, which you, when you go into your Quran, when you open it up, the first chapter is represented with these four statements. These four angels are manifested these Hence, they hold up all of existence. Here, the Prophet of God is told, Mikhail is coming, Israfil is coming, Israel is coming. Why? When he opens it, he sees that there's fruit there. Eat from that fruit. What was on it according to a tradition? It was that fruit which was forbidden for Adam, one tradition says. That fruit was brought. Why? It was haram upon Adam, not in the legalistic sense. It was haram upon creation because that was reserved for the one who could uphold it. Who was it? The Prophet of God. Why? Because there's an entity, there's a reality there. Four angels come down. Guardian angels of creation come down. For what purpose? Prophet knows there's something big about to happen. As he eats, one angel comes. Israfil comes. He says, Rasulullah, put your hands out so we can clean your hands. One angel takes the water back to the Arsh of Allah. As these four prophets, or as these four angels are the Jibreel that instructs the prophet. He says, Allah instructs you, do not pray now. It is prohibited upon you to pray. Why? Because Rasulullah will pray. Imagine this. Has any prophet ever been prohibited? He says, no. Your priority now is to go to the house of Khadija. Directly go to the, until you do not pass that light into Khadija, you're not allowed to pray. The tradition says the Prophet of God gets up and he goes to us the how having been cleansed for 40 days. That manifestation of the physical world as well. As you know, before you want to try for children, it's mustahab for you to fast for 40 days. But the highest level is the level of the Prophet. The Prophet was pure. He didn't need to fast. The Prophet is light. The Prophet is the first reality. The Prophet is the haqiqat al-Muhammadiyah. He doesn't need to do anything. 
But here the Prophet of God has been instructed, fast for 40 days. After fasting, Jibreel comes, gives him fruit. What are these fruit? This is the fruit of life from the tree of life. From that level. This is why in the tradition it says, it says when Adam was created, from the seeds of Adam, from the back of Adam, all of his seeds were shown. It says, this is all of your children, bar one child. It says, the only person who can bear this child is Rasulullah. From the seed of Rasulullah, Zahra was brought out. Otherwise, everything else was brought out of the seeds of Adam. At that moment, when he goes to the house of Khadija, as he knocks on the door, she says, who is it? He says, I'm your husband, Muhammad. She opens the door. She says, I've been yearning for you. I've been praying for you. I've been praying to meet you again. At that moment, she says, shall I bring you water to do abolition so you can pray? He says, at this moment, Allah has asked for something else. The tradition then goes forward. Says that the Prophet of God then does not move from the house of Khadija until Khadija herself says, now I can feel the light of Zahara within my belly. And at that moment, he says, now the light has been transferred. In this way, when that light was transferred, the tradition says this. It says that she begins to, when Quraysh left her, she begins to converse with her stomach and the baby inside. And it says that that child inside of her stomach gives her the support, the moral support and the light. She's illuminated now. As she begins to walk, she's illuminated with realities. The child talks to her. The child converses with her. The child teaches her. And it says in the tradition that just before Zahra comes into the physical world, it says that when all of Quraysh has left, they've all left her, they've said, in the tradition it says, leave your husband, otherwise we'll leave you. It says the one thing I'm not going to do is leave my husband. Tradition says at that moment, four women come. Four women, four lights come. One of them was a sister of Ibrahim. One of them was the wife of the Pharaoh. One of them was Maryam, Khadija's herself. And at the same time, the tradition then says, says one was Ibrahim's, one was Musa's mother, one was Pharaoh's wife. When all four of them come together, at that moment then they say, there's no need to worry. We've been told to come and help you because we are the servants of that which is inside of your womb. Servants of them. It's because of her that we are where we are today. And at that moment, the tradition says this, when she comes into the physical world, she goes into sajda. That sajda is the greatest sajda within the history of creation. And when she prostrates in sajda, Ahl Makkah come to the Prophet and say, we see so much noor that's shining all over the world. What is that? And at that moment, the reply then comes, it is my daughter who's gone into such that she's born and that light is illuminating all of creation. All of the people of the Arsh from the metaphysical reality of the physical world felt that light.